Mrs. Galloway wants to take her belongings out of the village and try and sell them in Perth. It's not surprising, considering the soldiers are trying to burn their house down and take all their possessions. When the Galloways came to Perth, they couldn't just pop into shops like these. So how can we tell what Perth was like at the time of our drama when the Galloways used to come here? Some of the clues we're looking for lie under our feet. In Perth and other Scottish towns, archaeologists have been at work digging in the ground for evidence of how people used to live. Sometimes they're in for a few surprises. They don't find a whole skeleton like this one very often. This was a man who lived in Scotland at the time of our drama when Robert the Bruce was king. By looking at the state of his bones, the scientists can work out if he was healthy, what he ate, how tall he was, and maybe even what he died of. This exhibition in Perth's museum contains objects that the archaeologists dug up from sites in Perth. Some of the objects were around at the time of Robert the Bruce, so they're at least 700 years old. These combs tell us people had problems with lice in their hair, even then. and they used arrowheads to trap animals and in warfare. Animal bones were found, proof that people ate geese, ducks and chicken. This egg has managed to survive for 800 years without being broken. Look, they've even found some boots. I wonder if in hundreds of years' times they'll put boots like mine in a museum. Have a look at this old piece of paper. It's so old and precious. I've got to put a pair of gloves on when I'm touching it. It's written in an old language, Latin, which I can't understand, but the translation mentions words like merchants, guilds and boroughs. What it is, is Perth's Royal Borough Charter, and it gives the town the right to trade with other countries. This wax seal made the document official. It did have the King's face in it, but it's been worn away over the years. How would the Galloway's wool have got from here in Perth to other countries? Perth's river, the Tay, flows out of the town and ends up in the North Sea. 700 years ago, it was safer, quicker and more comfortable to travel by boat than to travel by horse or on foot. So it was actually easier to travel to other countries than it was to travel over land between Scotland and England. The Galloway's wool could have ended up here in Bruges. This town in Belgium is connected to the wool trade. They even have a street named after wool. Scottish wool, which was sold to Belgian traders, ended up being spun into fine cloth. The Belgians didn't have their own sheep. They relied on buying wool from Scotland and other countries. And the Scots used the money to buy other goods from the people of Bruges.
So it was a two-way trade. Boats returned to Scotland with goods from Belgium like cloth and pottery. Archaeologists in Perth found some examples of pottery which came from Belgium in the Middle Ages. Perth wasn't the only trading borough. Any town on a river which had access to the sea could trade, as long as they had permission. So while Scots exported wool and animal hides to other countries, they also bought in wine, cloth and furniture from countries all over Europe. While Scotland was at peace, trade prospered and people made money. But what about Scotland at war? Would you do business with a country at war? The fighting there intensified today, particularly around the Croatian port of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik used to make money as a tourist resort. People came from other countries here on holiday. Not only are the people who live here suffering from bombs and fighting, but they can't make money because they've lost their tourist trade. And Scotland would be no different. When the country was at war at the time of our drama, trading ceased. The soldiers at war in Scotland used to destroy the local people's crops and animals by setting fire to their land. It stopped any soldiers following them from being able to find something to eat. So it wasn't just done as a punishment for the people. What's this? But sometimes there was punishment for individuals. Thomas Galloway risked punishment when his family helped the wounded soldier get to the abbey. Oh, this is wool. Wool. Lots of wool. Dump it. <coughs> No mutton, I suppose. Can you imagine what the English soldiers would have done if they had found a wounded soldier in Thomas Galloway's bale of wool? Do you think they would have locked him up in prison? A number of leading Scottish women have been taken hostage and placed in the hands of King Edward I of England. Among the group are the wife and daughter of Robert the Bruce and the Countess of Buchan. The royal party were captured at Kildrummy Castle and are being held at various locations in England. King Edward has issued special orders for the imprisonment of the Countess of Buchan. It appears he intends to punish her for the part she played in the coronation of Robert the Bruce. She placed the crown on his head. Fears are now growing for her safety. This letter from King Edward of England gives instructions for a small cage to be built. And the cage was to be hung from a tower in Berwick Castle. Important people like the Countess Isabella were kept as prisoners, but they weren't killed because they might come in useful to trade for important English knights caught by the Scottish army. Burn it. Wool is wealth. Even though they didn't find the soldier hiding in the wool, the knight still orders Thomas's wool to be burned. What reason could he have for doing this? <laughs> 